Greetings and welcome to Hearts of Iron for a grand strategy game from Paradox. Perhaps the grandest strategy game. Certainly the grandest that I've played so far. But then I only just wet my whistle with Paradox with Stellaris. And Hearts of Iron certainly takes it to a whole nother level. As you lead a country large or small through the turbulent years of the Second World War. A time of great technological and social change, much of which is modelled in Hearts of Iron 4. It really is an incredibly deep and complicated game, far more so, I found, than Stellaris. This is no easy game, but the reward is fantastic, I have to say. I have had an enormous amount of fun with this. I am in the preview release. The game is not available yet. It comes out on the 6th of June, D-Day, um, which is just a few days away now. I think this is going to be going out on the 2nd of June. As I say, this is a preview release, so of course there could be a few bugs and other issues that will hopefully be ironed out by the time the full release goes. But let's start a new game. And we're going to start in 1936 to give us plenty of preparation time. You can dive straight in in 1939 and really just kind of basically dive straight into war if you want to. But we're going to give ourselves a little bit more preparation time for the gathering storm. Dark times are coming. In Europe, Hitler has consolidated his power and his attention is now increasingly drawn beyond Germany's borders. Mussolini's Italy continues to embark on daring military adventures, while the Empire of Japan stands poised to attack China in Asia. Almost 20 years have passed since the end of the Great War, and the world has yet again been doused in gasoline. A single spark may be all. Let's select a scenario. Now, of course, we can play as any of the big major powers of the day. France, the United States, the United Kingdom, the German Reich, Italy, Japan, and the Soviet Union. And if this goes down well on the channel, we can come back potentially and play one of these major powers. But for the first game, something a little bit different, possibly something a little bit different to other YouTube series and streamers and things, we're going to go for a minor country. Um, and we're going to kind of avoid this whole area here. This, you know, I mean, I'm not a massive history buff, I have to say, but I have a sneaking suspicion that things are going to get pretty nasty around here. You know, the German Reich, probably going to start conquering a lot of these places. Yugoslavia might be interesting, potentially, to play in some future game, because it's kind of a wizarding purple, and it's not tiny, like every other wizarding purple country in the world. Um, so, you know, we're not going to do that. We're going to look to the Americas, for it is going to be a new dawn for the Americans. And, uh, and I don't mean the United States. We're not going to play as the United States. I think we're going to play as Mexico. I really wanted to play as Guatemala. In fact, I, I have tried to start a game as Guatemala when recording. And it's just too small, all right? Guatemala has, like, nothing. It has three factories or something ridiculous. You just can't, you just can't get a start with, with Guatemala, unfortunately. Which is a real shame because they're a really beautiful wizarding purple. And they're just in the right place. But... We can't do it. So instead, we're going to play as Mexico. We are going to be the Mexicans under the leadership of Lazaro Cardenas, a non-aligned authoritarian, which, you know, suits me just fine to begin with at any rate. So that's what we're going to do. Begin. And here we are, Mexico. Ah, viva le Mexico, or whatever the expression is. Obviously, I'm actually an Englishman in charge of Mexico, and I'm not going to attempt any dodgy Mexican accents. At least, I'm going to try not to. I might, you know, I might slip out from time to time. Um, the game is currently paused. Now, grand strategy. So, what is our plan? Our plan is, ultimately, it would be really nice to invade the United States, wouldn't it? Um, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. The United States will probably crush us when we choose to invade them. Um, and that can't be right away. We need to spend quite a long time preparing. We need to build up our power base. And I'm thinking we wait for the United States to commit itself in Europe, to send considerable amounts of resources across to Europe. And then we sneak in and attack them when they're not looking. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's bound to work, isn't it? When, when did attacking America, I mean, obviously by America, I mean the USA, when did that never go well for people? 
Um, so uh, we'll see how that goes for, for poor little Mexico here. Before that, though, we're going to take out all of this little low-hanging fruit here. We're going to take out Guatemala because just because they refuse to be a good nation for me to play in the first place. We can't really take here because it's the United Kingdom. We don't want to... We don't want to anger the beast too quickly, but these are all like like non-aligned. A lot of these are like non-aligned countries and stuff. So we should be able to basically hoover up all of these. This is a bit of an issue. America controls the Panama Canal. So we're probably just gonna have to go round it. So we'll need ships and things. And then we may, depending on how we're doing, if we're ready to kind of, you know, go up against the USA at that point or not, we might then kind of invade South America, maybe even conquer the whole of South America. I mean, my plans, you know, my ambitions are, are quite modest, really. I think you'll agree. They're, it's, it's pretty modest. Um, so uh, so that's the plan. That's the grand strategy in this grand strategy game. To do that, we currently start with six units. Uh, all infantry. I think we might have a unit of cavalry around here somewhere. Um, we've got units of infantry there. Oh, yeah, look. We've got some cav here. Look, we've got a unit of cavalry. Two units of infantry. Uh, we've got another unit of cavalry over here. Oh, good old Mexican cavalry. I mean, you can't beat it, can you? It's, it's totally going to own all of these fools, um, which is good, but we can't declare war just yet. So let's go, let's start at the beginning. First things first, Mexico. What is our national focus going to be? What are we going to do to get ourselves going? And the choice really, as far as I'm concerned, is between industrial effort, speeding up our industrial research, and as quickly as possible getting down here to get extra research slots, which... Uh, we really need because I think we start with two yeah two research slots that's really bad like the big powerful nations start with I think four maybe or something like that so we're gonna we're gonna struggle with research um, but that's just part of the fun right it's just part of the fun um, so I'm tempted to go straight down the industrial effort path political effort however will allow us to get started more quickly because we can get some political power out of this and we're gonna need to change uh, our our form of government if we're going to be able to attack but I think we'll start on industrial effort because we want to do like research right from the outset as quickly as possible this first one this first one uh, just increases 50% research bonus for industry but we're going to be researching industry right from the outset so it makes sense to get that bonus in as quickly as possible um, and to help our whole research game so Research! What are we going to research? Well, there is loads of brilliant stuff that we can research. Um, like, you know, infantry weapons, support battalions, tanks, artillery, land doctrines, naval units. I mean, I would love a good navy, but we'll see. We may not be able to build one. We need some sort of navy if we're going to invade South America. But, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, fleet in being, trade interdiction. Oh yeah, this is like naval doctrines. And then we've got air. We do start with a bit of air, which is nice. We've got tactical bombers, we've got close air support, and we've got World War One fighters, which isn't too bad. That we're going to be able to make fairly good use of this to begin with. Um, air doctrines, but rather boringly, what we're going to do is we're going to research the stuff that helps research and the stuff that helps industry. That's like our number one concern right now is to get the industrial machinery and research and development machinery of Mexico firing on as many cylinders as we can jam into them. So, electronic mechanical engineering. Time to research 95 days, research time minus 2%. It's a no-brainer. We, we go for that. Uh, second technology is going to be in industry. Um, now, we could wait for our national effort to be completed, but frankly, I don't think there's anything else I would want to research first anyway. So we're just going to go straight in and we're going to research uh, construction. Construction one, time to research 190 days, construction speed plus 10%. We will actually get the bonus off of this because this will take longer to research, 190 days, uh, than our industrial effort will take that's 70 days so about halfway through the other one we'll get this 50 percent bonus kick in which is good we want this we want it very much um we don't need to worry about diplomacy or trade just yet construction we do need to worry about construction and basically we want civilian factories we just want to build factories civilian factories to begin with and then military factories once we get our productive capacity up a little bit um and we want these basically wherever at this point in time it doesn't really matter too much we'll put a few in Veracruz here but two in Veracruz um, maybe we'll put one in Oaxaca Oaxaca that's what it's called um, what can I say that's just what it's called and I, I know my pronunciation is like it's almost freakishly good so 
Um, that's that's good. I don't 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 worry if you can't pronounce these as well as me. It's uh, it's a long it's a long developed skill. Um, there's all sorts of other things that we will be able to construct at later points, but right now it's just factories. Factories is all we really care about. Um, production. At the moment, we're just building basic infantry equipment. That's fine because to begin with, we're just going to be recruiting basic infantry troops, um, which we will train some now. Look, Division de Infanteria. Yes, I will take some Division de Infanteras. Um, I think we'll take three concurrently. We'll see how that goes. And because we're going to be invading Guatemala as soon as we possibly can, we might as well recruit our troops down here in uh, Chiapas. Chiapas. Yes, that is good. Um, now, logistics says we are low on steel. So let's check the trade. And, oh, uh, actually, no. I think we're all right here. Let's just unpause it. Our surplus is zero. So actually, we're okay. We're doing okay here. Our, our night and day cycles are on. Look, if I speed up time, which we need to do, it gets kind of distracting. So I'll try and remember to turn it back on when we go into, like, fighting mode and like slower time speeds but whilst we're like speeding up time let's not do it um, it'll just drive everybody crazy we have three military factories all right yeah we've got uh, three military factories so we'll assign them all to producing basic infantry equipment because we do need 4128 infantry equipments right now and i think that means that we probably are now in deficit for steel yes we are so we're going to import some steel um, and who do we, well, we could import it from the United States, but you know, we might end up attacking the United States. Um, so let's attack it, let's, let's import it from some nice neutral country. Sweden! Sweden's nice and neutral, right? I mean, if there's any country that's neutral, it's Sweden. So we'll import from them. We have 45 free convoys, which require 7 for this trade route. Let's do it. Trade route is in place, look at that. Coming all the way from Sweden all the way down here across the Atlantic and into Mexico into this harbor here in the Yucatan in the Yucatan Peninsula I mean where else where else would you go um, good let's bring some of these units down because this is definitely going to be where we're going to want them we'll bring the uh, shock cavalry as well. Uh, well in fact we'll bring everyone down we like this guy up here He's kind of guarding the whole northern border from the United States, but let's face it, if the USA invade us at this point of the game, we're doomed. So, let's just bring him down. Um, you can come down and join the war effort. We will, at some point, have to, like, man up and, and defend this border and potentially attack, which is going to be a pain because it's quite a long border and it's going to be well defended on the other side. There's, there's just no doubt about that, but we'll see, won't we? We will see. But you know what I might do? I might take uh, one of these factories off and start production of uh, some close air support, which will help. I mean, we'll only be like very slowly cranking them out, but uh, I think it, it'll be nice to, to actually have a bit of close air support when we're attacking around here. We should have air superiority, in all honesty. I don't think any of these countries even know what planes are at this point in history. That's probably being a little bit unfair, but you know, we Mexicans, um, we laugh at the countries south of us in the Americas because um, we're just like that really it's, it's like that and that's the way it is um, we do have some close air support already so let's assign that it's 12 12 whole planes uh, we'll put that on close air support mission and they'll be ready to fly at a moment's notice what will this mean for Spain a Spanish civil war a civil war has erupted in Spain. Several generals seeking to overthrow the government in Madrid have issued a pronunciamento, pronunciamento, and a large portion of the Spanish armed forces have answered their call to arms. This right-wing nationalist faction has occupied much of Spain, including the overseas territories. Loyalist forces and volunteers have assembled under the left-wing Republican government, determined to resist the putsch, the putsch, to their last breath. The battle for Spain has begun. What will this mean for Spain? You cry? Um, I don't know. Frankly, I have no idea. Is there even like a Spanish thing around here? Uh, Spanish territory anywhere around here? I'm not sure there is. I mean, there obviously used to be Spanish territories down here in South America, but I think it's all um, independent countries now. And then a few of these little like British, France, Netherlands type territories around. So... 
I don't worry about Spain. It's a long way away. Look, Spain's all the way over here. It's a bit of a mess now. You've got the the Republican Spain down here. Speaking of a mess, the remilitarization of the Rhineland. Germany has stationed troops in the Rhineland territory close to the French border in clear violation of the Treaty of Versailles. The local population cheered the German soldiers on, whilst the diplomatic reactions from France and Britain have so far been muted. It's no more than Germany walking into their own backyard, a political commentator in Britain observed. Worrying if you live in Europe, which we don't. We live in Mexico, so we don't care. Um, our national focus has been completed. Excellent. Um, now, we could go for a construction effort, but we're told that we don't have enough slots for civilian factories. Um, so this adds uh, one building slot and one civilian factory in Mexico City. So let's leave it paused and take a look at Mexico and Mexico City. Well, round and round the globe, round and round we go. There we go. Um, Mexico City. Six slots unlocked at the moment, uh, and it looks like all the factories are currently in place. Yeah, look, six of six. So there's no point in doing this this focus yet. As 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 much as I really want to rush down to these extra research things, if we did this now, we'd effectively be throwing away that civilian factory because we don't have anywhere to put it. We need to increase our mil our civilian factory slots in mexico in mexico city around mexico city before we do this so um, that's basically stopped us in our tracks there so we'll start down the political effort track instead this will give us 120 political power which we can spend on doing interesting things as you will see and it also allows us to go down either the collectivist ethos which leads on to fascism communism and such or the liberty ethos that leads on to democracies so we're gonna go with political effort there we go that's our new thing um, and meanwhile our construction will be getting a boost now because of the extra 50% speed to that which is good and we will be happy about it um, I assigned these planes but you know what I'm actually gonna unassign them uh, I'm gonna send them all to the reserves yeah I want to send the whole thing to the reserves because we have a closer airfield just down here which is closer to our front line so we might as well put them in there um, we haven't built any new ones yet, which is a shame, but, well, never mind. Put them in, and we'll put them in. Also, whilst I remember, we might as well group all of our units together, create an army, give it a general. Who's going to be our general? Louis Farrell or Glado Magna? Well, Glado Magna is a desert fox. Movement plus 5%, attack plus 10%, defense plus 10%, entirely at home when fighting in the desert. Are we going to be fighting in deserts? Uh, I suppose it's better than nothing, so um, fine. You know what, Mr. Uh, Gilardo, the Desert Fox Magna? You're hired. You can be our new general, and you can put the troops into exercise mode, which means they will, we'll zoom in on them, uh, start exercising. Look, push-ups, you know, aiming with the gun, doing some stretching. Uh, all sorts of good exercise. Look, doing some, I don't know what he's doing right there. <laughs> Whatever he was doing, it looked like he was, um, you know, taking a break. Anyway, uh, they're going to exercise, which will slowly build up our army experience, which we also get from fighting, primarily from fighting. But it's good to build up a little bit until we're ready to go to war anyway. Uh, we're now at 101 political power. We need this to go up to 150 before we can spend it on anything. Uh, electronic mechanical engineering is complete. Excellent, good work. The research and development boffins in our newly minted Mexican research and development headquarters um, were able to quickly crank that out. We're going to move them on now to mechanical computing. In 1936, we're going to get our first mechanical computing device built, which will increase our research or decrease our research time by 3%, which has to be a good thing, right? I, I think it's a good thing. I think it's going to be an awesome thing in actual fact um, we're just going to keep watching them exercise away little bit unpause it we could, we've still got one higher speed level we can take it to so um, we can speed things along as we need to we do have insufficient resources right now let's check our trade what do we need we need some aluminium that'll be for the planes that we need we also need some rubber um, sure where can we get some aluminium from well how about the Soviet Union Let's, let's import from the Soviet Union, shall we? And uh, also some rubber. Oh, who's got rubber? Who even has rubber? The Netherlands? Sure. 
We'll get some Netherlandish rubber. There we go. That'll be good for us. We'll uh, we'll, we'll enjoy putting that to work. Up. Our political effort has been completed, which has given us a big boost to political power, so we're up to 296. We shall spend that, but first, uh, let's gonna go, we're going to go down the collectivist ethos, because, as you'll see, I have a plan. Um, as I told you, staying, staying as a non-aligned government here is no good, because look, if we decide now, say we want to declare war, and we're going to declare war on Guatemala, right? We can't just declare war, because well, people don't do that. It's just not the done thing. You don't just declare war and go running in, shooting people. Um, it's not civilized at all. Instead, what we have to do is open up the, the diplomacy, take a look at them, and we have to justify a war with them. Because, you know, our population are just going to accept us charging in and attacking people. As I said, that's terribly uncivilized. We first have to, you know, release some dodgy dossiers and, you know, generally whip the public up into a state of frenzy that they think that the Guatemalans are about to attack us and then we can go in and attack them. That's the way that truly civilized peoples go about things. Unfortunately, we can't do that until the world tension is at 50%, which is, it's currently at 5%. Now, I, I don't know about you, but I'm not prepared to wait for it to reach 50% for us to be able to start this whole process of justifying war. So we need a new government, one that is going to be more gung-ho about going to battle, going into war. So uh, what we're going to do is we are going to recruit ourselves a communist revolutionary into governor, into governor, into, into the government, um, Mariano Ponton. Mariano Ponton, he is going to give us plus 0.1% communism daily support. Communism on the rise. A supporter of the international revolution hoping to aid the country and eventually the world transition to a communist society. Well, there we go. Communism on the rise. While workers rise up against their oppressors around the world, those who claim to have achieved class consciousness in Mexico sit idly by and wait for change to come from within a political system so thoroughly corrupt only revolution could save us from it. So speak new voices in the Mexican communist movement, referring to the rule of PRM as a dictatorship of the bourgeois. They have begun calling for it to be brought out of power by any means necessary. Whether those means will come from within or without remains to be seen. Well, there may be those in government itself who would support such ideals, especially assuming that your communist government would be prepared to impose its communist governingness on other countries, which, quite frankly, it is. So, we'll accept, um, and we'll slowly start. Look, we've, we've now got uh, a small slither of red in there that you can see. Look, if we start the, the clock running again, there is now Partido Comunista Mexicano, which is slowly starting to gain popularity, uh, replacing, well, not the, not this one here, replacing this one here, the Partido de la Revolución Mexicana, the non-aligned um, current ruling party of this guy, Lazaro. <laughs> Cardenas. I doubt we're going to get anybody who's quite as cool as this guy. I mean, look, he's he's so cool. He's just the most... He's got a slightly squinty eye, and he's got, like, a lopsided tash. I mean, he's just such an amazing guy. It's a shame, but he's not going to accept communism, so he's going to have to be replaced. Research finished on Construction 1. Excellent. Now, if we want to go to this, we would actually be paying, like, a, a premium, because it's ahead of the current time, so... The further ahead in time you go for your technologies, the more you pay, like the, the extra you have to pay because it's ahead of time. Technology is 0.41 years ahead of time. The more ahead it is, the bigger the time penalty. Well, it's fine. Look, we've got basic machine tools that we can research here, so we'll go with that. Um, and that will be fine. Uh, what we do want as well, we just look at the research tree, uh, the tech tree here for a minute. What we want to we want to get down here to dispersed industry because this gives us uh, max factories in state plus twenty percent, um, and then this just keeps going uh, like it keeps adding max factories in state as we go down the tech tree, which is going to mean we'll be able to build more factories, which of course means we can take the national um, effort uh, in order to get a free factory in Mexico. It's oh, it's going to be brilliant. You wait and see. That Mexico is on the rise and pretty soon the world is going to shake in its collective panties at the sound of our Mexican boots hammering the ground. Did we send anyone to the 11th Olympiad? Probably. We're, we're 
we're pretty significant, Mexico. I, I, yeah, there must be at least a couple. Look, the 11th Olympic Games were recently held in Berlin, Germany, attended by athletes from 49 different nations across the world. The 1936 Summer Olympics are the first in history to have enjoyed limited live television coverage. The Games were a significant propaganda victory for the German regime, which spent lavishly on the event. German athletics saw the most success, winning 33 gold medals, while the Americans came in second with 24. Four of these were won by Jesse Owens, the single most successful athlete of the Games. Good for you, Jesse Owens. Uh, but the Games are concluded. Did Mexico win anything? I don't know, probably. Um, if not, we were cheated, I tells you. National focus completed, collectivist ethos, the Treaty of Addis Ababa, Italy took one state, Ethiopia was annexed. Um, wow, that happened. Fine, collectivist ethos has been completed. Our next national effort is going to be for internationalism because we're already going down the communist route, right? So we're going to throw our hats fully in. Uh, one of the following must be true. Well, we're not aligned, so that's fine. This focus will cancel if the prerequisites are not met. Well, they are. Effect gains national spirit internationalism, which grants daily communism support of plus 0.1%. So it's just going to speed up our conversion to communism. Oh, yes. Yes. The green dawn shall come. Um, because uh, we're green. Look, because we're Mexico. Well, I wanted it to be the purple dawn. I so wanted it to be the purple dawn. But sadly... It's going to have to be the Green Dawn. What can I say? As soon as that happens, we're going to be able to start to declare war down here. Which is great, because it means fighting. And fighting is kind of what this game is all about. Basic machine tools. Excellent. Um, now we can go down the concentrated industry. At this point, we have to choose, right? We can either go concentrated industry, which gives us plus 20% factory output and plus 20% max factories in a state or we can go dispersed industry which still gives us 20 percent extra max factories in a state but only plus 10 percent factory output plus 10 percent production efficiency retention production efficiency is something i will explain that later as we start to produce more and more um factory bomb vulnerability is minus 10 percent so if we thought we were going to get bombed a lot we might want to go down dispersed industry but I think we need as much early boost as possible, and until we actually declare war in America, we're probably not going to come under much air attack, so we're going to go with concentrated industry for maximum early speed boost. Excellent. When that is complete, uh, hopefully we'll be able to get an extra slot here in Mexico, and um, and then we can, uh, we can do that political thing that we're going to do. You know the thing. You know the thing, right? I know you know the thing. I don't need to explain what the thing is. I'll just keep saying the thing indefinitely. Good. Let's let the time roll on then. We'll keep an eye on our... <laughs> look at this. Oh, they've completely replaced. The Partido de Nacional Democratic Movement is just gone. Nobody cares about it anymore. Everybody is all about the new on-the-rise communist ideology, which is now at 15% and rising internationalism focus has completed so it's just going to be rising even quicker now um we can't go down this just yet because we're going to wait for the other one to complete and make sure that we're not going to be wasting it it is still yeah yeah it's still um so we can go down political correctness potentially political power plus 200 gains national spirit political correctness which grants foreign subversive activity efficiency a minus 75 percent i'm not sure anyone's trying to subvert us at the moment um so maybe we don't need to do that just yet maybe we could like like get ahead on like army effort or something here army experience plus five at uh, one times 50 percent research bonus for land doctrines we're gonna do land doctrines at some point likewise aviation let's just get this on the, just, just, we'll get it started that sounds like a good idea to me we've got 300 political power wow i haven't been paying any attention uh let's recruit a new politician uh, of some sort. Let's get industrial people in. I think I think probably electronics company is better. Minus 10% research time for electronics. We can always change this later, right? With a bit more political power, which we'll probably have a lot of floating around later on. Um, and until we've re like researched at least a few of these, we're probably not going to switch away from this. And these in and of themselves reduce research time, so it seems like that's like 
the way to stack the benefit, potentially. We have available planes in our reserves. Uh, how many available planes do we have in our reserves? Let's take a look at our airfield. Uh, in the reserves, we have 19. Oh, we managed to produce 19 new planes. We'll keep producing them until it's time to go to war, and then we'll make one big wing. Um, although I don't know how big this airfield is. Mechanical computing has been completed. We're now going to switch over to doing radio, because it's still 1936. We don't want to pay the extra cost of going down here too soon, but radio is still use useful. It's, it's still worth having. Uh, research, radio. Adopting the invention of amateur radio operators and extending the use of FM radio will reduce radio interference and allow us to find new uses for radio technology. Reinforce rate a plus 5%. That's fine, but actually what we really want is to get down to radio detection and then radar and things like that, uh, which will be awesome when we get there, but we're not there yet. Um, but I think that's probably going to have to be it for our first episode. It's probably going to be about half an hour long or around that that sort of like mark. I'll try and edit it down a little bit. Um, hopefully in the next episode we will be indeed declaring our first war, but until then, thanks a lot for watching everybody. I have been Weird Wizard playing Hearts of Iron 4. And I will see you later.